On today's podcast, we're joined by Sabrina Del Priori, who is Vice President of Creative Music Strategy at Paramount Pictures and Viacom. We discuss the various parameters and platforms that she works with with music and how she makes her musical choices. Also, at what point does she become involved with a television show that she needs to get music for? It was a really interesting conversation. She talked about the sources that she uses for her music needs, the marketing opportunities that exist for her music placements, and much, much more. For any of you artists out there who are interested in sync or in getting your music into TV shows, this is one conversation you're definitely going to want to check out. Insiders, are you ready? Welcome to Mubu TV's Insider Podcast, where our mission is to educate, empower, and engage artists and music business professionals who are dedicated to having a successful career in the new music industry. Here are your hosts, Rich Ezra and Eric Knight. Welcome back, Insiders, to another episode of the Mubu TV Insider Podcast, where our mission is to educate, empower, and engage your music career. On today's episode, we're with Sabrina Del Priori, VP of Creative Music Strategy at Paramount, where we discuss the various parameters and platforms she works with at Paramount, how she makes her musical choices, and the marketing opportunities that exist for her music placements for their various TV shows. But first, a quick word from our sponsor. Hey insiders, are you looking to take your music career to the next level? Then you need to know about the Music Business Registry. The Music Business Registry is the leading music industry publisher of the most up-to-date contact information for major and independent record label A&R, music publishers, artist managers, music attorneys, music supervisors, and much, much more. The Music Business Registry is the trusted industry standard and source serving the music business community for over 28 years with the most accurate and up-to-date contact information available. Their titles include the a Registry, the Film and Television Music Monthly, the Music Publisher Registry, and the Music Attorney Registry. All of their publications are available in print, PDF, CSV, or online subscription. Visit them now at musicregistry.com and receive a 10% discount by using coupon code MUBUTV10 at checkout. That's musicregistry.com, coupon code MUBUTV10. When you're ready to put your music to work, musicregistry.com. Welcome back, Insiders. Today's featured interview is with Sabrina Del Priori. Sabrina is the Vice President of Creative Music Strategy at Paramount. Now, what does that mean? It means that she oversees music supervision for different kinds of shows on different platforms at Paramount. Paramount Plus. Um, Viacom Television, Nickelodeon, different kinds of elements with regards to marketing TV shows, how music is used in that kind of context. So it was really interesting because she's not only doing it for one show, she's doing it for a network. She's doing it for a much broader kind of constituency. So her needs are far greater than the, than the average music supervisor. Absolutely. And I was thinking too, also, what are the sources that she uses for her music needs? Because now it's just a wide plethora of different platforms and shows that are going on and the marketing opportunities that exists for her music placements as well. Absolutely. I thought it was an interesting conversation because she talked about not only the needs for her shows, but she talked about how music is used to market the show in, in, in that sense of like, you know, how do you advertise the show in, in promo on television? You know, be sure to watch, you know, XYZ show. So it was really interesting in that regard. Absolutely. So insiders, sit back, relax, and enjoy our featured conversation with Sabrina Del Priori. Sabrina, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, Sabrina, when in your life did you know that the music business was going to be your professional career path? Wow. Post-college, I would say. (laughs) I was at my second job. So after New Line Cinema, I started at the movie studio. Uh, I went to Oxygen Network, and that's when I started working with music. Um, And it was kind of one of those things that once I started doing it, I was like, I was always such a huge music fan, and then I knew this was was my fit. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sabrina, what does your role actually entail and consist of, which is, you know, VP of Creative Music Strategy at Paramount? So uh, I oversee music supervision and music licensing strategy for various types of content across various brands. So that entails, you know, really digging into the creative, uh, understanding the tone and the music needs of a show, 
uh, working and sourcing, you know, the right composers, the right music supervisors. Sometimes we are actually in-house music supervising ourselves, uh, which shows there's a good opportunity for that, right? Like we kind of know the resources we have internally and then just knowing, okay, this show I can in, I, we can do internally, this show, let's have somebody externally. You know, the whole aspect of music uh, is interesting from a network standpoint. Paramount has a lot of platforms. Can you talk about those platforms in terms of your role with regards sure. to music? So um, we have the Viacom Media traditional cable networks, right? So the cable business. Um, and that includes Paramount Network, TV Land, Comedy Central, Nickelodeon, Awesomeness, which is actually a digital platform first, but they do a ton in studio production. So they actually made the film, for example, to all the boys I've loved before, which went to Netflix, as we know. Um, it's a very successful franchise. We also have digital platforms, so we program for YouTube. We do what I like to call bridge content for our shows, right? So that's sort of the content that is in between seasons, traditional seasons that keeps the viewer's appetite wet, right? So that's content that will just give them a little bit more insight into the show, maybe some behind the scenes. And that typically goes on the digital platforms. Obviously, very big now is like the streaming networks, quote unquote. So we have Paramount Plus. So we're doing a ton of content there. Sabrina, given the wide diversity of programming across multiple platforms in your job, which you were just talking about, how do you even keep up with the musical needs of each of them? Because it seems like it's overwhelming. It can be overwhelming. Yeah. I mean, we're a team of people. Obviously, there needs to be more than just me. Um, so just having a phenomenal team that's as passionate as I am about the projects and really loves the business of syncing music to TV and film um, and the art behind it. You know, we really are just, we're fans first. Um, and that's really what gives us our energy and enthusiasm for all the projects. Because every single project, imagine going to work every day and you're kind of faced with like, this is a whole new creative and a whole new producer and director behind the show. And you just get so enthusiastic because every single one is their baby, right? So it's, it, it becomes your baby as well. And so you just care just as much. You're involved in so many uh, platforms and so many aspects of music supervision. Um, at what stage do you become involved with the various shows? Is it at script stage? Is it in post-production? When does that happen for Ideally, you? Ideally, it's really from the inception, the sort of um, treatment. So once we've kind of decided that a project is developed enough where we're like, we're ready to green light based on this concept, we hope um, to be looped in at that point because that's when we'll start to talk to people about, okay, this is what we see and hear um, is right for the show. And then we start to think about music budgets, right? We try to inform those early on so that we can, you know, capitalize obviously on the creative and make sure that we can meet the creative needs. Are you involved with the marketing and cross pr promotional opportunities that arise yes. from these shows? Um, and we start to think about them really early on when we start to make create placements and we start to map out which, which what music is going to go into the show, we start to think about the marketing opportunities. Uh, and we do so in a way that we, I like to think we're really thoughtful about it and that we really want the artists to also benefit from the placement in the show. So we start to talk to them about that early on. Um, and so far as like, hey, would you be cool? Like, let's post, right? We'll post about you you know, you repost. So we start to kind of build out content. And I'll start talking to the internal teams from a press perspective, from a social perspective, and so far as creation of content. You know, how can we just really magnify the placement and let the viewers know about this artist that we've included in our show? Hey, Insiders, we hope that you've been enjoying our featured interview. Stay tuned because we've got so much more value coming your way. But before we dive back in, a word from our sponsor. Hey, Rich, you're the founder, CEO, legend of Music Business Registry. Tell us what the Music Business Registry is all about. Well, what it's about, Eric, is it's a company that is designed to provide the most accurate and up-to-date contact information for the music business. So if someone is looking to reach the A&R community, if someone is looking to reach music publishers, if someone needs to reach artist managers, if someone needs to reach music attorneys, if someone's looking to place their music into film and television and needs to reach all the music supervisors, that's the contact information that we provide. We've been doing it for 28 years. We're 
sort of the industry standard, if you will, uh, for the music business uh, and, and have been serving them since 1992. So that's what we do. Amazing. So if I wanted to find out, let's say, uh, A&R uh, people from uh, Warner Brothers, let's say, I can just go in there and find that in the A&R registry? Absolutely. You'll find all of the Warner Brothers in there. You'll find the Warner Brothers in L.A., Warner Brothers in New York, Warner Brothers in Nashville, Warner Brothers in London, Warner Brothers, you know, probably in Australia as well. So those are the, the main territories that we cover. Amazing. And we're offering all of our insiders right now that are listening, if you visit musicregistry.com and use coupon code MUBUTV10 at checkout, you'll get a 10% discount off your first order. That's musicregistry.com, coupon code MUBUTV10. Anything else you want to say, Rich? Well, when you're ready to put your music to work, musicregistry.com. Let me ask you, how, I guess, we talked before on the panel about the different kinds of sources that you use in, in music. What are some of the trusted sources you use uh, to source music for the various shows that you're involved uh, with? I mean, we definitely, obviously, we do use the DSP. So I do go to Spotify. We do go to YouTube. Um, we do work with labels and publishers and quote unquote, you know, indie labels and sync shops. Uh, we'll let them know. Uh, we also have great relationships in the production music library world, um, creative music agencies. There's composers that are tried and true that we'll go back to from time, you know, time and time again. And, you know, just because you're not in the system yet doesn't mean we're not welcoming new you know, artists and, compo and composers. If we see you out there and we're searching on YouTube and we think you're super interesting or love your point of view, we will reach out and give you an opportunity, even if it's the first time. And how would a composer or songwriter get on your radar? You kind of spoke about it a little bit here, but is it is it through the library, song pluggers? You know, it's just very, is it various areas it's that you guys really are? really various in? areas. I mean, we love to be able to discover artists first. I mean, who doesn't, right? I mean, there was, right. you know, there are stories that were told often like a placement to us that seems sort of, I don't want to say everything's significant, but in the sense of like, it was like one placement within a show, but then we hear back from that particular indie artist and like that actually changed and catapulted all these amazing things in my life. Um, or that, you know, little bit of licensing fee and money actually made such a huge difference in their life and what they were able to do. So that's the best feeling in the world. And we would love to be able to do that for, for indie artists. And we do seek those opportunities. So I think it's having a social media presence. I think um, also once you get our attention, like let's build a trusted relationship. You know, sometimes people will, some, will say that they're one stop and they're not one stop, or they'll say that their writing is kind of buttoned up or their splits are buttoned up and then they're not. Um, and that can just cause a little bit of back and forth right. and potential legal issues, which we always have to be really cautious about, obviously. Of course. In your life, have there been any books or movies that have really been inspiring to you on a professional basis? I mean, I think, you know, I grew up during 90s films, right? And I mean, the soundtracks then were just so phenomenal, right? And, um, you know, from Pulp Fiction to Train Spotting, and right, those films were just, and those were my favorite albums to buy. Uh, because, I mean, back then you didn't really make your own playlist. I mean, you could, but not to that degree. Right, and right. a lot of that music wasn't available. Right. So uh, they just got me so enthusiastic about, you know, music and film and TV. And um, that definitely, you know, sculpted my, my interest in it. What advice can you offer our listeners who are wanting to pursue a career as a music supervisor? Well, you know, it's so great. Like nowadays there is like actual programs that you can take, right? When we were kind of ground right. dating myself a little bit, but like you, you can study, there was music business, right? But now there's actually music supervision courses that you can take or music supervision degrees to a certain extent in certain colleges. So I think that's all great training. Um, but I do think, you know, intern under a music supervisor, you know, get used to getting paid, you know, just don't get paid for anything, but just get paid for, you know, just be there to learn. Um, internships is a great, real, is a great opportunity. Um, also for studios. And what advice would you have for, uh, I guess, composers who want to seek a career as a professional composer in film or television today? Oh, it's today? such a hustle. It really is. It's, um, it's tough, but I think just keep putting yourself out there. Uh, don't be too concerned about the money up front. I think just, you know, get the opportunities, get yourself known, put your content out there, uh, work with people, even if they can't pay you a lot at the beginning, but who are going to promote you or put you out there. 
um, you know, we've all seen it happen. Even in the music supervision world, you take you take a gig at a really low rate, and then you build that relationship, and then you you kind of build up, and then you're getting paid, you know, a list sort of rates. So um, get the experience because there's nothing. I think there's nothing more valuable than just having the experience, especially when you're on a TV timeline and you're on a film timeline. You really just have to get in there and do roll up your sleeves and, and just do it. Yeah, absolutely, especially television, which just is merciless. I mean, it's every single week. Yeah, you, you can't, you know, <laughs> exactly. Just, you know, oh, I'm sorry, we're late. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know, exactly. so, okay. I would just want to say thank you so much for doing this. We really, really oh, appreciate it. Oh, no, thank you, you for having me. This is great, my first podcast. Yeah, <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you so thank much, you. Sabrina. We really appreciate it immensely. This was a really interesting conversation, Eric, and, and you know why? Because it wasn't the normal conversation, not that there's anything wrong with it, but there, this wasn't the normal music supervisor conversation. Right. Her purview, her landscape that, that Sabrina is works massive. with is massive. It's involving a lot of brands. It's involving Paramount, television. Multiple networks. Yeah. Multiple networks, Nickelodeon. Um, Streaming, you know, Paramount Plus. Exactly. So she's dealing with a whole host of different, that has different identities, different paradigms, different needs. And she's also using music, not only in the shows, but in other facets of the network as well, which I thought was really interesting and gives our listeners an understanding of how can you contribute value to what Sabrina's doing, which is somewhat different than working with a music supervisor where you're just trying to deal with that particular show. Right. And I thought also, what are the sources that she uses for her music needs? I mean, this is a question we always ask our music supervisors. And I thought it was interesting. I mean, it was the usual things of publisher, uh, other music houses. But what I thought was fascinating was that they do look for the opportunities to come up with new and up and coming brand new artists that can kind of contribute with uh, with new songs that they might fall in love with so that, that somebody like a Paramount would actually take a chance on that. Absolutely. And developing that relationship with her, I think, is so important. This is where I think the real value of this interview came in for our listeners is understanding the value for that, for their career, if they're looking for new opportunities for their music. Hey, Insiders, thanks so much for tuning into this episode. We really appreciate it. To get show notes, links, and everything that was mentioned during this interview, head on over to our official website at mubutv.com forward slash podcast forward slash show notes. If you're enjoying the content and what we're doing here on the show, please subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts from. And don't forget to rate and review our show over at iTunes. Five-star reviews are always welcome and help to ensure that our podcast stands out on the top rated and new and noteworthy charts on iTunes in our space. You can also find us on social media at Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all ending with the handle Mubu TV, which is spelled M-U-B-U TV. Don't forget to catch our flagship show, the Mubu TV Insider Video Series, airing every week on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash Mubu TV. This show was produced and created by Rich Ezra and Eric Knight. This show would not be here if it weren't for our amazing team, which are the following. Interview editors, Sarah Nissenbaum and Alex Taylor. Show notes and transcriptions by Jani Chang, Nicole Caboglo, Lilia Owens, and Sarah Nissenbaum. Theme music by Disciples of Babylon. And be sure to tune in next week for another episode of the Mubu TV Insider Podcast.